So, well, I see our head of unit, Mr. Pascal Boyman, is joined already, so I would say we can start. And for the beginning, very welcome to everybody, very heartedly that you are here. And some technicalities, uh, please be informed that the event will be recorded and make available afterwards on public channels. So your participation means your consent to that. Therefore, if you don't agree, you would have to disconnect. However, I hope that that will not be the case. So welcome once again to this event that marks the end of the pilot project at the Lithuanian Polish border and that was aimed at the identification of the key elements for creating the tourist cross-border functional area. The contractor will present us the final findings from the report and the tangible effects of this border pilot. The outcomes of the study may be useful and applicable in other regions of the European Union, in particular at its peripheries and inner peripheries. The study will be published afterwards, but it is, however, written in Polish and Lithuanian language, so not accessible perhaps for everybody. No. But don't be worried, uh, there is an abstract and executive summary in English that I will provide you with afterwards. So please let me introduce you the people signing for this success, a team consisting of Polish and Lithuanian researchers. As a project supervisor, Professor Joanna Kurowska-Pysz from the University in Dąbrowa Górnicza, Poland. And in her project team, Dr. Andrzej Jakubowski from the Maria Curie Skłodowska University in Lublin, Poland, who is known already for some people from the workshop uh, from the uh, week of the regions. Professor Eduarda Spirajevas from Kwaipeda University in Lithuania and Dr. Tomasz Studzieniecki from Gdynia Maritime University in Poland. Good morning, everyone. About agenda, we start with backgrounds, with uh, then going to the borderland tourist potential, model of coordination, proposals for joint activities, development and co-management of the border, of the cross-border tourist destination, and lessons learned for the end. Following the presentations, there will be the opportunity to ask questions and discuss with the researchers and uh, among uh, us, uh, us here. But for the beginning, Please let us start with some impressions from the Lithuanian-Polish border and the project teaser. Please go on, Joanna.
On behalf of the Polish self-governments participating in the project, I would like to emphasize that we are very glad of the results that we achieved together. The key project result is signing by all the partners the agreement on creation of the tourist cross-border functional area called Jadwinga, the land of Jadwings. It will start the new cooperation stage between partners and other stakeholders from both sides of the border. It is something very innovative and promising for us. We are sure that the project findings allow, allow us to strengthen the cooperation on the Polish-Lithuanian borderland. Both Polish and Lithuanian partners can provide the potential and resources to create various action to support the cross-border functional area development. The first one is already being implemented as the project entitled Lithuanian Polish Functional Area New Tourism Development Possibilities. Its aim is to promote cultural, historical and natural values on borderland and make them more useful for the tourism branch on borderland. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the partners for the excellent cooperation and successful results. I will also like to thank the European Commission for the support on creating the cross-border functional area and developing the ideas for the future projects and actions. We are also very glad to cooperate with the project team that was inspiring us in many fields. I hope soon we will be able to show you the first results and make this region more attractive for tourists, more coherent and provide better quality of life for our inhabitants. Good morning, the European Commission members. Good morning, dear Joanna and team. Good morning, Lithuanian and Polish partners. It is my big honor today to speak to you about this wonderful project. The project that had many challenges for Lithuanian and Polish communities. Thanks to European Commission, we faced our possibilities that we could be as one, as one tourism destination point. And that was big and important point for us going forward to create joint institution, institution to manage different challenges and to prepare joint projects. During this project implementation, we find out our strengths, that we are strong together, that we have history together. And we identified as Yetvingia land, the land of history, strong men, and fairy tales. The land where you can find slow life, slow food, enjoy love stories, and much more. Your project, your finance project inspired us to take another step, small but very important. All our partners submitted joint interreg application form and we were succeeded. We got financing for our first joint tourism development project. And by this project, we create our joint tourism destination point identity identity joint movies joint folder joint trips album and much more and even this project is soft as we call usually them no hard investments but it's the most important for us because it is first time inspired actually by you thank you joanna to be so strong and unified for main goal, for being seen as cross-border community, as a strong tourism destination point, as new challenge, as new tourism provider services, to make believe our businessmen, our craftsmen, our amateurs, so we can be as one. We can create Yetvingia land attractive interesting 
diversity and full of joy, full of possibilities to eat, to be active, to enjoy, to stay overnight, to meet Lithuanian and Polish partners, to stay in communities for a night, to participate in joint festivals, cultural events, and to have much fun that you never realized you can do it. So this project is a key project for us, for Lithuanian Polish municipalities. And on, and on behalf of all Lithuanian mayors and Polish mayors, we are very grateful to show us the way how we can be unified, how we can identify joint projects together with businessmen, together with institutions, with NGOs, with private persons having, for example, Yetvingia museums, and to unify this for main joint purpose, to be known, to be visible, to be strong as one. We are not divided by cross-border. We are unified by it, and we are strong together. And now we have another challenge to open joint institution, to establish joint institution, so we can start bigger joint works. We can search for more possibilities, for more financial mechanisms and instruments to develop our joint border by infrastructural projects, by soft projects, by unifying NGOs, amateurs, and businessmen. So what you've done for us, it will be talked from generation to generation. You are beginning, and we are very grateful for it and very thankful. So thank you so much, dear Joanna and your team. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for showing us the possibility, for giving us opportunity to discuss on concrete projects, to identify the ideas, how to develop, how to implement them, and to preparing for us already structure, how we shall act for the steps. Thank you so much. Thank you, European Commission, for believing. Thank you, and we hope that, we will, that you will not regret and we will make miracles, and one day we will meet all together in Yetvingia land. Have a nice day. Uh, so, thank you for this introduction, these interesting statements from the both sides of the border and from the impressions from the borderland and from the project. And now, please, uh, I would invite Ms. Mrs. Kurowska Pysh for the first point of the agenda. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. At the beginning of my presentation, I would like to underline that development of touristic functional area on this borderland was a bottom-up initiative of the Polish and Lithuanian self-government. In March 2018, they signed the intent letter to start together designing the cross-border functional area focused on tourism development and based on networking. It was something very innovative for them because so far the cross-border cooperation was developed on the Lithuanian-Polish borderline mainly bilateral. Another important step was the cross-border research showing the borderlands potentials and problems. And conclusions from that research were used in further analysis leading to the tourism cross-border functional area establishment. In 2019, Polish and Lithuanian partners met again to take further steps to create functional area 
the partners initiated the conference held in June 2019 under the patronage of Interreg program. And the conference chairman, the conference chairman uh, were Mr. Marek Pravda, head of the EC representation in Poland, and Mr. Arnoldas Pranskiewicz, head of EC representation in Lithuania. In August 2019, the partners participated in cross-border workshops supported by European Commission that revealed the real potential to develop the cross-border cooperation on the Lithuanian-Polish borderland, especially in tourism. After approving um, Polish and Lithuanian partners' initiative by the European Commission, the project was launched in December 2019. Its objectives, uh, its first objective was to identify the factors and processes for the development of the tourism cross-border functional area on the Polish-Lithuanian borderland. But the second goal was to set up a roadmap to develop the cross-border tourism destination and create the brand of this area uh, in the long-term perspective. It should be emphasized that it was a pilot project in the Central and Eastern Europe, uh, because in this part of Europe, there are no good practices related to such solutions. So I guess it can be an inspiration for other border regions. In this slide, uh, you can see the boundaries uh, of the cross-border functional area. Uh, the process of designing was based on four criteria, including the issues related to tourism sector condition uh, on both sides of the border, as well uh, as the cross-border cooperation development level. Regardless of the project goals, which, were been, uh, which had been achieved, uh, the Polish and Lithuanian partners pushed forward some issues and boosted the process of cross-border functional area establishment during the project timeline. This February, before the project formally ended, they signed the agreement and formalized, formalized setting the functional area. Last year, the partners prepared jointly a cross-border project, which was co-financed by the Interreg Lithuania Poland program, and it has started this January. This project, this cross-border project, enables a smooth continuation of activities aimed at development of tourism offer. And the partners also agreed the name of the future cross-border tourism destination, Jotfingia, the land of the Jotfingian tribe, and uh, the assumptions regarding the logotype. So in fact, they have achieved the project estimated goals or effects before the project ended. Uh, now, I would like to give the floor to Professor Eduarda Spirajevas, who will tell you more about the borderland tourist potential assessment. Eduardo, please share the screen and use the microphone. Uh, uh, hello, uh, good day. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear yes, you. Yes, we can, but we are muted, so. Okay. So you can hear me well, yes? So thank you very much. I just, Chris, I just uh, shared with you my screen and also would like uh, to continue your uh, presentation. Uh, first of all, why this potential of uh, tourism development at the uh, Lithuanian-Polish uh, uh, borderland is uh, so uh, important? Of course, uh, first of all, we can think about uh, different um, backgrounds of development, about the geographical location of this area of uh, this region. Uh, this territory also used to be very much important for both nations, for Lithuania, for Poland, and also for the whole Europe. 
in the previous times, in the former Soviet times, it was the border of Iron Curtain. And then later, when the Lithuania regained independence, it became the border be between the two countries. And today, uh, today the border also is uh, within Schengen. And uh, also concerning about this topicality and uh, the importance of this border area, is always always will be a lot of discussions from the both sides of the both countries. And uh, also in addition, uh, after the gaining of independence of Lithuania, this borderland became gateway to the Europe for Lithuanians, Latvians, Estonians, as the land corridor. And also we can consider that this borderland also is one of the narrowest land corridor within European Union space. But uh, for some reasons, uh, local communities and uh, local inhabitants, CS and also neighboring regions, they have used to be to have some negative image uh, of the borderland, which was dominated due to long procedures on border crossings. But now the situation has changed more to the positive way and also mental barrier of the border also is decaying uh, disappearing and now we see that borderland is becoming open for both nations and also for the whole uh, europe and besides it's also one of the most uh, sparsely populated areas in the european union and uh, here you can see also a representation of a couple maps, uh, a map of Poland, neighboring country of Lithuania, and also maps of Lithuania. Uh, there is also a very big and very big significant reflection of Lithuania's history and culture, which also stretches to the Polish part, and also a reflection of Polish history and culture, which stretches to Lithuania part. And uh, this uh, also these uh, different different peculiarities and different experiences and also different developments also affected the need to formate common values and common identities for this borderland to think about attractiveness and to think about the future prospects. And the final outcome is that this territory also is, is transforming and getting more uh, focused on territorial cooperation and formation of new identities and common values. Uh, what about the tourism potential? Uh, tourism potential in this borderland uh, can be uh, comprised of the following aspects. Uh, uh, we have distinguished that a very much important aspect of potential is uh, nature environment, also cultural heritage, and also historical uh, development. On the both sides of Polish-Lithuanian part of the borderland, we can see a lot of valuable places, both tangible and intangible uh, values, and also very much prospective resources, as well interesting and attractive cultural heritage, which has not only local value, but also the value on the whole, uh, in the context of uh, the whole uh, European uh, Union. Uh, this area uh, also transforming from uh, local tourism to becoming uh, more attractive regions also on international tourism in order to attract many uh, visitors from overseas and also from different uh, countries. When we try, <coughs> excuse me, when we try to uh, detect um, uh, different uh, aspects and also different uh, conditions uh, for development. Also, we can see that nature and environment, they place very much important issues, national parks, and also the lakes of region, and also the histories of the noble persons, and also uh, very much important identity, the uh, identity of the former Baltic tribes of Yatvingians, which also representing their heritage in the South Baltic tribes in this area between Poland, uh, Lithuania, also including parts of uh, Belarus, because uh, this borderland uh, recognized as a former core area of Yatvingians. And uh, continuing, we also can see that uh, when we try to analyze um, different landscapes uh, from Polish part, Polish part has a very high potential in nature tourism development, also in eco tourism development, and also in representation of very much and also important heritage, 
cultural heritage, which is also very significant also on European uh, context. Uh, when we uh, also examine the situation from the Lithuania part, we can see the situation part also is more or less uh, similar, but also this possible to uh, detect some disparities. And uh, we consider it that uh, tourism infrastructure and uh, present situation concerning to tourist potential is more uh, applicated for development than the Polish part. Uh, because two countries, two different approaches used to be and different strategies. But uh, the point is that in this uh, unique places, a borderland also must be uh, supported cross-border cooperation issues in order to create common products, uh, common roots, and think about common values, uh, and think about the common future of uh, this uh, area. And both communities of the vice or both sides of the border, they just can simply enrich each other and supplement in these uh, developments. And uh, in fact, uh, tourism is uh, recognized as one of the most uh, important factor, which can also facilitate uh, spatial interaction in functionalities of this cross-border functional area. And uh, reflections of cultural heritage of both nature and also uh, common nature values and also pictures, landscapes, and also the identity of former Baltic tribe of Yachmingians. These all of them uh, plays a very much important role also in further development of different touristical products and their continuation uh, in the future. Uh, and finally, uh, I also would like to distinguish a couple uh, concepts uh, which were also elaborated by the group of researchers and uh, as a magical borderland as second one as a mysterious land of the Achvingian tribe and also green retreats low tourism and healthy lifestyle but also common heritage and the concept as mysterious land of the Achvingian tribe uh, supposed to be as the core concept but uh, in particular this concept also is closely related to all these three concepts and uh, they are also all of them representing the potential for future uh, developments and uh, what also remained um, unlocked as a potential because uh, this area is a very complex area very interesting area from different perspectives and tourist uh, potential tourists uh, having different motivations and different interests of course they can find uh, different uh, factors of attractiveness we also determine mind that still remains uh, not fully unlocked ethnographical potential for future prospects, architectural and linguistics, religious heritage of historical memory. And also we noted that uh, there is a lot of different names, so topographical names, geographical names. In fact, they have the root related to the old Yachvingian tribe. And also these words uh, have some kind of explanation in the Lithuanian language, but we have many things in common between Polish part, Lithuanian part, which should be developed and also promoted to creation of these uh, important uh, destinations. And uh, basically for conclusions, uh, also the most important to stress uh, one more time uh, that uh, uh, the values, of course, the insist reciprocal understanding and also they create conditions for cross-border cooperation among different societies, communities that experience different scenarios of social and cultural evolution recently. And the improvement of existing and creation of new ones tourism ecosystems depends on national tourism sustainability of inter-regional relations and intergovernment political approach based on efficient actions of local municipal authorities. And elaboration of tourism products based on determinants of common natural, cultural, and historical values promote reinforce spatial interaction between areas in this border. Land. Thank you for your attention. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, my name is Andrzej Jakubowski and in my contribution, I'm going to present you the model of coordination of cross-border cooperation under the tourist cross-border functional area. Uh, and Currently, the cooperation uh, within the Lithuanian-Polish borderland partners is uh, 
hampered by many factors. And the most important is the incompatibility of institutional solutions in Poland and Lithuania. It's also the insufficient administrative capacity. And uh, currently the cooperation here is uh, uh, maintained mainly, not only, but maintained mainly by the local government units. And there is a need to involve more stakeholders and more entities as well as local communities. So in our model, we tried to uh, propose some solutions that would allow to address these problems and guarantee successful cooperation on the Lithuanian and Polish borderline. So our aim was to uh, develop the structure that would be flexible, that would be less uh, bureaucratic, and that would allow for the efficient and effective implementation of the goals and tasks that are perceived for the cross-border functional area. We also aim to take into account the uh, existing differences between the Polish and Lithuanian administrative structures and the systems and the scope of competences of uh, local government bodies. And as you may see, uh, we here have five main bodies that are perceived to, uh, uh, to uh, consist for this model. This one is the board, the second the presidium, secretariats, cross-border task forces and cross-border working groups. And uh, this model can be divided in, let's say, two, uh, uh, two uh, groups of bodies. The first one is responsible for the coordination of cooperation. And the second one, the lower part, is responsible for the cooperation with the variety of uh, stakeholders. So for the readability of this presentation, let me, uh, uh, let me divide it and present it on a separate uh, slides. So the first part is responsible for the coordination of the cooperation and uh, um, uh, is responsible for the maintenance of cooperation between the local self-government bodies. As you may see, we've got the board and the board should be or should serve as a programming and evaluating and control body for the tourist cross-border functional area and would be composed of the representatives of all local self-government units uh, uh, cooperating. I mean the partners within the uh, uh, tourist cross-border functional area and uh, they would represent uh, the Lithuanian and Polish side. The second body, the presidium, would be an executive body uh, coordinating the tasks and activities of tourist cross-border function area. And the presidium would be composed of the one representative of the Lithuanian side and the one representative of the Polish side. And do, they would be chosen for the, uh, as like a rotation uh, and manner. So um, uh, there will be rotation between Polish uh, uh, presidency, let's say, and the Lithuanian presidency uh, here. And we've got the third type of a body, this is a secretariat, and the secretariat will be responsible uh, for providing, let's say, ongoing organizational and administrative support for the tourist cross-border function area, and there will be one secretariat operating uh, on the Lithuanian side and one secretariat on the Polish side. And in order to involve as many stakeholders as it is possible uh, in the cooperation with the, the tourist cross-border functional area, we uh, recommend to uh, complement the above structure with the, um, some bodies that would be represent, responsible for the uh, uh, current and going um, cooperation and the development of the products of uh, tourist cross-border functional area. And we've got here uh, two bodies, uh, two types of bodies. Uh, the first one would be cross-border task forces and uh, we propose to designate two cross-border task forces. The one would be responsible for the integrated tourist offer and, the, uh, and for the working out the proposals for joint actions, for joint projects. And the second one, cross-border task force for tourist information promotion would be responsible for the territorial marketing of the area and for the development of a common cross-border tourist information system, let's say in cooperation with the entities that are usually responsible for tourist information and promotion on both uh, sides. And the second type of a body is a working group. And uh, these working groups should work within the cross-border task force for integrated tourist offer. Uh, working groups should be responsible for, uh, let's say, carrying out the specific tasks. And they would be, uh, they would be, um, uh, 
they would be uh, or appointed, let's say, by the board, and they would be responsible for the special task. And now we uh, propose to establish uh, four working groups. Uh, each would be responsible for the one concept of tourism development within the tourist cross-border function area. And we believe that the proposed model uh, of coordination, of cooperation under the uh, tourist cross-border function area provides a good conditions for the development of cross-border cooperation and the networking between the partners and integrating the different types of the partners uh, and stakeholders. Also, it uh, uh, makes it possible to activate uh, the partners that now are not um, uh, fully engaged in the development of tourist product of the border area. We also believe that this coordination structure um, ensures the maintenance of coordination and mon monitoring of the implementation of projects that are planned for joint implementation. And it's also tailored for the needs, for the possibilities, for the uh, for the uh, 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 existing situation and, uh, uh, and, and let, let's say local conditions. And uh, this model uh, was accepted by the partners and became the part of a founding document, let's say, uh, formalizing the cooperation on Lithuanian Polish borderland. So uh, the model uh, is legalized, let's say, by the agreement on creation of um, 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 cross-border function area Yatvinga, the land of the Yatvingian tribe. Um, it is, of course, very important to have uh, appropriate uh, uh, financial resources to implement the joint projects and to run uh, the cross-border functional area as a, um, uh, as a way of cooperation, to cooperate between the partners from both sides. And uh, we think that it's important to engage the different types of sources uh, um, uh, like European sources uh, under the European Regional Development Fund, within the European Territorial Cooperation Programs, within the European funds under the programs at the national and regional level, also the funds from the state budgets of both countries, uh, Poland and Lithuania, and the most important that funds from the budgets of local self-government units that would be uh, very important in terms of ongoing cooperation under the tourist cross-border function area, and also for securing the contribution to cross-border project co-financed from the external funds and uh, securing funds for implementation of projects that would be um, financed from own resources and co-financed from regional and national uh, projects. We also believe that the most important role here is, uh, or maybe uh, 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 improving role of a private capital, uh, I mean the financial resources of a private entrepreneurs that would uh, uh, like to develop their own businesses in the field of tourism and related industries in the uh, Polish-Lithuanian borderland. So um, the activities of the partners should aim to the broadest possible engagement and involvement of a private capital here for the development of a, a commercial tourist product. So uh, how to implement this model? What are the next steps that should be uh, done? Uh, we believe that uh, the partners now uh, are ready to develop more detailed organiza organizational solutions by adopting the regulation. So we've got the model as a, some kind of a framework for cooperation, but the more detailed solutions should be developed by the partners. We also uh, know that there is a need to provide a staff for the coordinating structure, for the task forces and the working groups. And there is a necessity to uh, have an open recruitment to the task forces and working groups. Also, the partners, uh, uh, I mean the uh, local self-government units, should uh, provide the necessary financial means for the ongoing cooperation, for the full-time administrative support, for the um, 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 fundings for participation of the partners in a board meetings and task force meetings uh, and uh, securing funds for the other jointly agreed objectives and for the tourist promotion and uh, information. Also, uh, uh, the very important thing is to, uh, to uh, make some, to motivate the partners to uh, 
for the greater involvement in cooperation and to uh, have an open intake for the uh, endeavors and projects that would be uh, developed on the area and that would be uh, appropriate for the designed directions of cooperation and the tourist offer of the Lithuanian Polish area. So uh, uh, this was my input and now uh, uh, this will be followed by the presentation of uh, uh, Professor Urowska Pysz, so Joanna, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for attention. Joanna, we cannot hear you. Okay, okay. How uh, we hear you? Okay, I will repeat. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andrei. I would like to present you now in short words the joint actions and uh, the project planet for the functional area. But I would like to mention at the beginning that the, the tourism cross-border functional area can be considered in two perspectives. So the short-time perspective requires the planning of the cross-border activities, providing the development of cross-border tourism offer. And the long-term perspective requires the planning of the cross-border tourism destination and the brand creation. And this topic will be presented in a moment by my colleague, Tomasz Studzieniecki. And right now I will focus uh, on a short-time perspective. So I would like to, uh, to tell you that the Polish and Lithuanian partners planned uh, together three uh, actions, joint actions covering the functional area on both sides of the border and they are focused on cross-border tourist information system development, uh, improvement of the qualifications of the entities responsible for tourism offers and strengthening the agro-tourist businesses on both sides of the border. So these activities will be realized uh, within the whole area. Uh, the partners also planned almost 50 individual and cross-border projects, and some of them you can see in this slide. The projects are focused on the tourism offer development according to the four uh, tourism concepts that uh, which were presented previously. They aim, uh, they aim both to enhance the existing tourist products and to create new ones. Uh, there are various projects providing the diversity of the borderland tourist offer. And at the same time, most of them will be developed in cross-border partnerships. We strongly recommended the Polish and Lithuanian partners to coordinate continuously the process of preparation and implementation of joint actions and projects. As you know, first joint actions started, started in January, as I said previously. We have also paid their attention to harmonizing special development plans to eliminate barriers to cross-border mobility of tourists and uh, residents. We encourage them also to give information about the functional area establishment to entities responsible uh, for the inter lithuania poland program and to the unit dealing with the development policy and uh, European operational programs. As the partners provided the fluent coordination of the cross-border cooperation within the area, and they specified the plans on what they should do to boost the tourism offer, the next step ought to be thinking about the future cross-border tourism destination. And now I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Dr. Tomasz Studzieniecki, who will tell you more about this. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you can you see me and can you hear me? Good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me say a few things about tourist market. Tourist market is very, very demanding. And in order to be successful, we decided to create a destination. What is a destination? Destination is some, something very secret, mysterious, but this means success. Destination is a place visited by tourists. So if you think about cross-border functional area, we think about destination. 
we have to create destination. There are a lot of destinations in the world, so our destination must be very unique. That's why we, we decided to make the research and we found the key markets. We decided that we would like to invite tourists, especially from Eastern Europe, Northern Europe, Western Europe, and Southern Europe. And how to do this? Creating a destination is a long process. And it's very, very important to remember that there are several, di several dimensions, several levels. There is special level, so we have to make a delimitation. There is marketing aspect. It means we have to prepare tourist products. There is institutional aspect. So it means that we have to prepare the organization. And there is also psychological aspect. People must have some impressions. That's why we found some elements that are very, very unique and that will make our, our destination very interesting. The destination management process is a long process. It starts with building the awareness of the destination. And at the very, very end, it means that we have to support development. We have prepared the project. We have, to, we have prepared the concept, but a lot of things have, have been done. We have achieved a, a lot of success, but still there are some elements that have to be done. What is so important? In my opinion, it's very important to develop a strategy for developing the brand. We have only started this process, so we know what are our strengths, we know what are our assets, but then we have, have to prepare the called brand branding strategy. And this is our challenge. And in order to prepare the brand strategy, we have seen those four interesting concepts. We have this mysterious land of Jotfingians. We, we see that, 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 that we have this green, green retreat concept. We see that we have common heritage and we have the magical borderland. By the way, this is the three point between Poland, Lithuania and Russia. And it's also one of the attractions. But we have the four concepts. But between four concepts, we decided that we'll have one dominating concept. And of course, this is the mysterious land of Jotvingan tribe. But also three concepts are also also very interesting because together they'll, they'll, they create one vision of our destination. So we decided that the accent will be Jotvingan tribe, Jotvingan heritage. Why, why was it that? I was personally involved in promoting an interesting European destination called Viking destination. And I think that there are some very interesting similarities. Both, both are transnational. And if we think about Viking heritage, we can, we can find some similarities and use also for our Jotvingian destination. So that was one of our inspirations because we, 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 we prepared kind of a benchmarking. And our idea was that destination Jotvingia will be something very unique, will be something very attractive, and it will uh, make this de destination interesting for our, our tourists. So that was our idea to use this, this Jotvingian, Jotvingian heritage. And then, then what else should, should be done? We, we need some, we need some 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 recognition we have we have to be we have to be seen how to do this there are some interesting instruments one of the instruments is european destination excellence uh, reward called eden and this is one of our challenge to apply for for this recognized reward also in the baltic sea region there is the initiative called baltic sea tourism center they also created the re reward called sustainable destination. So this will be the next challenge. But what we are thinking also about, the Council of Europe is su supporting interesting initiatives called European cultural routes. There are, there are a lot of cultural routes, but so far there is no cultural route uh, based on, by, uh, on Jotvingian heritage. So one of the challenge was to prepare the documentation of Jotvingian cultural route and ask European culture to recognize. And in order to do this, we have to use our national tourism organization, I mean Lithuanian tourism organization and Polish tourism organization. 
Those are our challenges. And what are our recommendations? First recommendation is that we have to reserve our, our brand. We have, have to, we have to, uh, 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 we have, have to uh, make this officially uh, register. And another, another, another very, very, very important uh, recommendation is uh, ensuring the consistency of the organization and promotion of this our destination. I mean, at this moment, this is a cross-border functional area. But if we do all those recommendations, we will have cross-border destination called Jotfinia. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Tomasz. And now, summarizing the presentations, I would like to present the lessons learned in short words. The functional area development is a multi-stage process. Uh, why the area is focused on tourism development, it's necessary to analyze deeply the tourism potential at the beginning of the process. Uh, this is key point to put forward the next activities. If we plan the functional area focused on other branches, we should also analyze their potential first. It's crucial to recognize problems and needs of all key stakeholders, not only public institutions, not only self-governments, but also companies, NGOs, and the local communities on both sides of the border. One should point out the factors influencing the development of tourism on the borderland. And after that, it will be the right moment to design the functional and area boundaries to clarify also which stakeholders are included within the functional area. It is necessary to start discussion concerning the model of coordination, the cooperation, and the short-term as well as long-term initiatives provided the functional area development. So as you can see, designing the functional area boundaries uh, is the, the fourth step, it's not at the end. To make the process successful, we need four key factors. First uh, important factor is the evidence that the area tourism potential is sufficient. Uh, to evaluate this, we have to use various research methods and we have to involve all key stakeholders in this process on the both sides of the border. That's why we used in our research many quanti quantitative and qualitative methods. The next factor is a proven dynamics of cross-border cooperation, aiming uh, at putting forward the process of functional area creation. The last one is choosing the appropriate assessment criteria that allow to point out the functional area boundaries, providing achieving the stakeholders' goals. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Joanna. Thank you, all presenters, for the interesting insights views of the work and of the findings, and as well of the landscapes and history of the Polish Lithuania borderland, which is, I think, for uh, uh, some participants here, not so very uh, known. So now I would like to invite the participants to pose a questions if they have any or to comment on, on the presentations. So please uh, take the opportunity to, to say something. Who would like, please raise the hand. Can I? Yes, please, Pascal. Thank you, thank you, Beata, and thank you, thank you all for for your very interesting presentation. And uh, I think uh, if there's already one positive effect is uh, uh, of of your presentation is that indeed what Beata just said, maybe to most of us it's not such a well known area uh, far away here from Brussels, but it makes you interested, it makes us curious, uh, maybe uh, to travel there and plan our next holidays there. So that's already 
one positive side effect, I think, of your, your presentation. Um, so I think it's, it, it's also what I think was also very well explained, the different steps you took uh, in, in the whole process. Uh, and I think it's also a very good example of how we can stimulate uh, Tourism is very often one of the few sectors which can help in, in more remote and less densely populated areas and how we can, can um, use tourism as, a, as, a, as an engine for also for economic, uh, for economic development. And in that sense, I think the work you did could also be a good example for, for other border regions which we have in Europe and where we have similar issues uh, and, and, and limited other opportunities for development potential. So I think uh, Therefore, also, uh, Professor Koroska, at the very end, what you said, the, the, the lessons learned, I think is something very good to, to take over also for, for other, for other um, uh, projects. I had one concrete question. Uh, you said also all the stakeholders uh, you involved, uh, not only the public sector, also the, 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 the entrepreneurs and also the, the, the NGOs. If you could could elaborate a bit more on that, because for me, uh, the way you explain it to me, is still very much uh, led by the public sector, uh, the impression I got uh, from from the regional and local authorities, which is as such is good. It has to start somewhere, uh, but if you can say a bit more um, about the involvement of the entrepreneurs of the private sector and also the the commitment uh, you have achieved until now in the private sector, if this is also something part of the the, the agreement, which uh, they also have been part of that agreement. And also one other question, uh, I think one of the strengths, you choose the four concepts which you explained and uh, where the mysterious land of the Jotvingian tribe is the, 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 the leading concept. I also was um, looking from coming from a more densely Western part of Europe. Uh, I think also the green retreat to me seems very attractive, eh? which could be very attractive, at least for tourists coming from this part of Europe. Um, uh, but of course, there you have to find a fine balance between, at one end, preserving the biodiversity, the richness of the natural nature you have, and on the other hand, uh, to attract the tourists. So, how you've been working there, for example, with relevant NGOs in this area, uh, which are working on biodiversity. So maybe the, the the role of the involvement of the private sector and the role of the the NGOs, and in this case, specifically protecting nature. Those will be two concrete questions I had. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I will, I will try to answer the first questions regarding the involvement of uh, all groups of stakeholders. And I would like to, uh, to add something um, uh, about the Jotfingans, but, but I think that uh, my colleagues will also uh, add something from their side. Um, I would like to say that from early beginning, we were uh, very, um, very much focused on involvement, uh, not only self-government, not only public institutions, but um, also companies and NGOs. Why? Because the tourism branch, this is a commercial branch. So, so most of uh, tourism products uh, have to be developed by um, companies and by uh, NGOs in some way. Of course, uh, self-government involvement is necessary because someone has to uh, uh, develop the strategy for the region, in this case for, for um, borderlands. But without involvement of companies and uh, self and uh, NGOs, as well as local communities, this uh, initiative will be very, very, will be very, very narrow. And uh, I realized that uh, when I uh, explained uh, the, the businessmen and uh, the, the um, NGOs representatives uh, what is their interest in this project they uh, were uh, very interested in and they were very active. They supported us not only during workshops, uh, during the, the meetings and interviews or research walks, but they also submitted their uh, proposals for the future projects. They are some individual projects, but they are also a, pro a cross-border project. So uh, they... Um, agreed together, I mean, for example, two companies from two, uh, two, uh, from um, Polish and Lithuanian side, that they would like to develop together the agrotourist offer. And this is something very positive, because generally, um, many people think that cross-border cooperation is mainly related to interreg programs. And as you know, this kind of entities is not eligible there. So at the beginning, when they realized that they can be supported from interreg, 
they had some doubts whether it's for them or not, but we uh, showed them their interests. We showed them they, uh, the possibilities and the opportunities to develop their businesses thanks to the cross-border cooperation. And for most of them, probably, it was the first, first opportunity to discuss their problems with the colleagues from the, um, from the, the borderland, uh, not only from Poland, for example, but also neighbors from Lithuania. So this is very positive, and also it's visible when we review the list of projects. We see there are many projects um, uh, submitted by NGOs and by uh, companies. And regarding the, the yacht things as a, a potential uh, brand for the future uh, tourism destination, I would like to, to, to answer uh, Tomasz Studzieniecki and Eduarda Spirajewas because that was their job to evaluate it deeply. Thank you. Who first, Eduardas? <laughs> um, you can start, Tomasz, yes. Um. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, I would like I would like to start with 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 my uh, uh, um, the, the vision of uh, the double interpretation of the area. We 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 have something what is called cross border functional area. So we see that 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 area as as a area divided by the border. This is this is one vision, but we also have two two separate areas. One is Polish part and one is Lithuanian part. And it is, it is very, very important to remember that in, the, in, 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 the, in on both areas, there are different stakeholders, both in Polish part and at the Lithuanian part. So, so it is very important to acknowledge that both parts, Polish and Lithuanian are prepared to, uh, uh, to take uh, uh, stakeholders from business because it's very, 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 very important. Uh, I mean that in, in Poland, we have uh, several legal instruments like local tourist organizations and, and we have local, local uh, action groups. So I think that it's very important to use also those national instruments uh, 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 at the same, same time to create something cross-border because this cross-border structure is very, very, very soft at this moment. That's why, in my opinion, it's very, very important to, to develop both, both the idea at cross-border and also at, 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 at national level. This is what I think. Well, do you agree, Eduardas? Yes, uh, thank you for uh, giving time. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it's uh, also very much important uh, to cooperate uh, on tourism development issues, uh, in particular in this borderland. Uh, from Lithuanian perspective, uh, Lithuania for many years already has set up priority of tourism development in many regions, in many territories, and also in different border areas between Lithuania, uh, Latvia, uh, Lithuania, Belarus, Lithuania, Kaliningrad region of Russia, and also this borderland. Uh, as uh, Thomas said, uh, this uh, structure is created, and uh, the most important is facilitate and promote uh, interaction and cooperation between different stakeholders and also entrepreneurs in order to provide uh, common products. Uh, from different discussions uh, which were organized uh, also last year, uh, the entrepreneurs, local businessmen from the senior part, they expressed opinion they would like a promotion in creation of infrastructure. If infrastructure will be like some basic things have been done, then they can uh, provide a lot of interesting critical products, but also this infrastructure vision must be agreed also on a political level between two countries and also on municipal level. Uh, stakeholders, entrepreneurs, local ones, they have a lot of initiatives. They have a lot of potential to provide and to uh, make uh, insert, insertion to this area. But first of all, they would like to see uh, created and confirmed uh, model of interaction and uh, of uh, cooperation. Thank you. And if I may add something to the questions regarding uh, uh, the private capital and the uh, 
private firms, um, we may see the uh, tourist destination as the area that is uh, uh, characterized by the competition. So the partners and the uh, uh, private entrepreneurs, they uh, compete within themselves for the tourists, but also they should cooperate and they know that they should cooperate for the greater visibility of the area, which is peripheral, which is uh, remote, as we know. Uh, so the private capital is uh, interested in cooperation and this, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, knows that the cooperation and the development of the tourist cross border uh, area serves them, serves uh, the uh, development of the potential of the area and uh, will benefit with the, uh, uh, with the uh, more tourist there. But uh, for sure, the, our structure is led by uh, public sector and we see this role for the public sector as a leader of cooperation, but uh, we also see that many stakeholders is interested already in the participation in the uh, cooperation within the task forces and working groups. Thank you. Thank you as well. And uh, perhaps uh, coming back to the second part of the question from Mr. Boymans about the question of environment, a biodiversity and green deal in the, con as in the uh, view of destination development and touristic destination development. How would you see this topic? Tomasz, could you answer please? Yes, yes. Um, I, I think as uh, sustainable tourism and sustainable development is concerned and also the sustainable transition, which is a uh, very, very, very important. Uh, we, we, have, we have done, we have done the, 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 the analysis if our destination is sustainable and taking, taking the EU recommendations of sustainable tourism development, we think that, that we have the big opportunity to create a sustainable tourism development that, that includes not only, not only net natural heritage, not only cultural heritage, but what is really very, very important, this structure that we are preparing also includes local community uh, the involvement. This is very, very important. And uh, if, uh, Bata, if you agree, maybe I will join your question with the question about, uh, there is an interesting question. question. Um, do you feel the need to set, set up structure like EGTC? Is it possible to, to, to combine those two, two questions? Uh, I would even, I wanted even to, uh, uh, recommend this so thank you very much for coming back to this yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay so 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 uh, uh, please imagine our our situation we we had to achieve the goal and the goal was to prepare and create cross-border functional area we were analyzing a lot of a lot of uh, options a lot of possibilities we have also made the research about the best practices in 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 europe and, and we are observing different different concepts and different EGTCs. Of course, from the very beginning, we are thinking about those tools, right? Like uh, local community development led or, or those uh, EGTCs and those uh, joint joint investments. But we we had to compromise. Of course, EGTC is the best potential solution that we can imagine. But what what uh, there, there are both strengths and weaknesses. The strengths is that this is a very the most uh, the most serious, the most most formalized structure. It, it, it gives a lot of potential. But the problem is that it is very 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 formal and for us the priority was was to make uh, this initiative. Leave. The priority was was to prepare such a structure that will work at, at the moment, and and uh, and we realize that in future, of course, it it it, it may be managed by HTC, but but uh, but it must be the decision of the stakeholders because it requires a lot of time, a, a lo lot of energy, and a lot of determination. So our our proposal is. Uh, at at the at this moment, this soft structure is is 
the optimal the optimal way to to involve all the stakeholders also to involve business and in future of course such the the the, the option like egtc can be uh, can be considered why because both governments have adopted the eu regulations it means that both poland and lithuania are prepared and if if the both sides agree if, if if they have such a will of course it will be it will be a good solution for future this is my opinion thank you thank you as well as we are now uh, talking about the uh, model and the uh, funding i would have here a question coming from anna from anna mozeleska from our unit who was as well involved in this project from the beginning. Thank you for this. And she wanted to know whether, uh, given the need for the external funding, does it make sense to undertake project initiatives in the functional area defined uh, in the study based on local actors? And would it not be more beneficial to try to find promoters at the regional level? Perhaps, Anna, you wanted to add something to, to this question? So thank you very much uh, to the team for a very interesting presentation and uh, developing the four uh, concepts on the tourism uh, in, the, in this uh, borderline. Well, I, the question is really based on my practical experience because you prepared a study which is very comprehensive and which provides with the very clear uh, ways of continuing it in, and uh, making it operational. So uh, now will be where we, are, where we can find the financing for those uh, initiatives and uh, knowing the rather complicated system in Poland and perhaps less complicated system in Lithuania where there is no regional dimension and the macro regional dimension. But in case of Poland, when we talk about the EU funding, we know that there is a number of programs and not often the small uh, beneficiaries, the, the applicants without the support from the higher level, they will not be able to uh, prepare high quality applications and to receive the funding so much needed uh, for implementation of these um, components. At, at the end, uh, there will be uh, not really like a systemic dimension of, uh, of all of these uh, elements. So I'm wondering, because of course we, we started this project, it was very much a bottom-up initiative, but uh, in terms of implementation and looking for the financing, uh, don't you think that it would be more practical to to have a higher level uh, positioning uh, of the um, of the pro project promoters and supporters. Okay, Anna, thank you for this question. I would like to to answer. Well, I think that this um, cross border functional area is a tailor made solution for the small communities, and the the um, success of such initiative. Uh, is uh, strongly related to uh, the possibility to involve um, co companies and NGOs, is not only their government. And they find their chance to prepare something uh, together, especially according to their needs. And um, it was uh, something unique. Whether, whether we, we tried to, to uh, put this initiative on the regional level at the beginning, I think it would be much more general. And in this way, the, uh, the stakeholders uh, would be probably much less uh, identified with uh, this initiative and uh, we would not uh, receive so many interesting projects. Of course, they are aware that they will need uh, variable funds to uh, support their uh, initiatives, but there will be different um, paths for uh, companies, for self-government and for, and for, for um, NGOs, for example. And this is just the beginning, yes. We, we um, grow with them very fast, yes. The area was established uh, before the project ended. So now it's the right moment to, to discuss 
uh, within the partners, Polish and Lithuanian partners, what should be the next step. They started the first joint project. They started to cooperate on a daily basis. And for sure, they will uh, look for uh, different uh, sources of funds to support their initiatives because even uh, last day I uh, last days I received from them the questions regarding the report and the the further steps so they still count on us and they 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 uh, expect that Polish and Lithuanian self governments involved in the area will support them with uh, further activities. As I said, for companies, for s most of NGOs involved in the project, this, this was the first opportunity to start something cross-border, to start something together. And of course, the funds and uh, regional promoters are necessary for them, uh, probably, but they, they wanted to, to create something tailor-made, especially for them. So I guess that um, prepared this this uh, um, this model of cooperation and put it on the local level was much more efficient than put it on the regional level at the beginning. May mm -hmm. oh, something? Yes, I would I would like to say that uh, the development of the destination requires the synergy of both national and and interreg I mean EPC funds, but. We have to remember that our cross-border functional area consists of units that that are uh, that that are uh, in a, in a not such a good economic and social situation as their neighbors. Those areas are less developed. That's why those 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 the, the, our our cross-border functional area have strong co competitors and on both Polish and Lithuanian part, I mean the surrounding area. And what it means, it means that it's very, very, very important to, 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 to put money, not, not to those areas that are, are already developed, but to find a way to put, to, to, to put money to directly the cross-border functional area. And of course it requires cooperation with regional authorities, but, the first step has been done. I mean, the cross-border functional area is recognized. And when it's recognized, there is a partner that co can communicate with regional authorities. So we have the chance, we have the possibility because the success is that this cross-border functional area has been established. It means that, that there is the partner that can negotiate funds and, at uh, 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 regional and, and national level. Thank you. This is important. I think in uh, this relation, uh, Anna, your second question is partly answered, or do you have comments on the perceived risk of the desire to implement projects of a national character without a cross-border character in the area? Well, this uh, question is partially answered, but still I think that uh, given uh, the fact that we will uh, have different funding channels for those projects, uh, uh, this risk uh, for Interreg at least, uh, it still exists. Uh. There is always risk, but we have to be optimists. Okay. And I have here a coming question from the Joint Secretariat. Jivile, uh, perhaps you wanna uh, put, pose your question by yourself. I can. So thank you, first of all, for very, very interesting uh, presentation. And it's visible. It's kind of a lot of work was done behind. My question would be related to the sad situation we see. In fact, I think not in on, only our borderland, but in all world. So the touristic flows have decreased significantly. So according to the statistical data we were gathering, so the year 2020 had decreased around 80% of tourists being accommodated in the program area. Mm -hmm. And I think it's more or less reflects the world situation about the tourist flows. So did you take this into account and do you see it more as a risk or more as a potential? Because most probably the, it might happen that the tourists, first of all, will start traveling 
somewhere very close, not not very far countries, but maybe trying first of all to to travel somewhere to the neighboring country. However, currently this is simply impossible because you are not able to cross the border. So can you comment on this issue? How do you see the situation and did you calculate how long it will take when the situation might become new normal? <laughs> okay, thank you for the, qu the question. At the beginning, I would like to mention that uh, when I conducted the uh, tourism, um, tourism demand analysis last year, I interviewed many people visited uh, the both parts of Borderlands because uh, in uh, July and August, um, at the beginning, it was possible to cross the border also. And people were very happy that they spent their vacations, their holidays exactly there, uh, because uh, the low density and peripheral uh, character of the, the area was something very positive for them at that moment. And people who uh, run uh, tourist businesses uh, on both sides of the border, they, they were rather glad of tourism uh, demand there. But of course, it was uh, summer last year. Uh, when we uh, gathered the projects uh, for the um, functional area development in the future, uh, the businesses and NGOs, especially NGOs, they were really afraid whether it will be possible to develop these projects uh, very soon because of pandemic situation. Uh, I think that we are, uh, we have to be patient uh, for a moment uh, because we, we need to clarify the situation with pandemic. But um, this is only my opinion. I would like to, to ask also my colleagues to, to, uh, to answer this question from their point of view. Mm -hmm. I may, uh, no, uh, nowadays, many tourist destinations are facing the problem, of, no, maybe not nowadays, but in recent years, they are facing the problem of over-tourism. And we believe that, it's, that after the COVID-19 pandemic, there will be uh, a chance for remote places like this, for a great green retreat, that the people will look for a place that would uh, uh, be remote, would be not so densely populated, and uh, that would not face the problem of over -tourism. So We believe that there's a future uh, uh, um, for uh, places like this and the tourist destination like this. Remember that we developed the tourist cross-border functional area in a long term and for many years, not for, um, for, for the current situation or the 2021. Um, uh, but we believe that the uh, pandemic will change the tourist behavior and this will be uh, in a benefit for the um, for the borders like this or cross border areas like this. Thank you. I would like to add uh, something very very important that this pandemic situation has caused the situation that the 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 theoretical weakness of the cross border functional area, I mean theoretical, which is less developed infrastructure can become our, our strengths because in other areas surrounding this, our destination, there are big hotels, big, big, big holiday centers. And this is very, very dangerous at this moment. And people, as, as my colleague said, are looking for more, more, more green, more, more sustainable, more ecological area. And this is our, our opportunity to use this potential, use, 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 use this, these aspects and to promote as a sustainable destination. So, so my, my idea, my concept is promoting as sustainable, sustainable green destination, health, healthy destination. And I think that this is our uh, uh, a challenge that we can achieve. Thank you. Uh, and also I'd like to provide some comments uh, also from uh, Lithuania part about uh, this uh, impact of pandemic situation. Yes, uh, pandemic station affected uh, many environments, many ecosystems. And uh, last year, I spent a lot of time in this cross-border area in uh, LSDA, uh, Gulkovichkis. And uh, I also noticed uh, that uh, the trend of visitors also was quite active. 
uh, active. Uh, I mean, yes, uh, for instance, according to statistical data, uh, it was a significant decrease uh, in accommodation establishments, very significant decrease. But uh, when we try to compare data from uh, national parks, from um, visitor centers, and uh, also we mentioned that there is also a significant increase of one day visitors. And what does it mean? Basically, uh, this interesting phenomena, uh, uh, talking from Lithuania perspective, happened in many different regions also here, that pandemic situation and also these restrictions, due to these restrictions, people, they just cancel the trips going abroad, but locals, they started to pay more interest towards national tourism and towards uh, examination of um, uh, different uh, locations which are within the country. And uh, what it gave that, for instance, the businessmen uh, who provide the services of catering, uh, they didn't have uh, so many complaints uh, about the touristical season in July and August. And most of them, they consider that this was uh, one of the most uh, successful touristical season financially. And uh, also concerning about this area, uh, uh, while this pandemic situation exists right now, uh, yes, of course, it's difficult to predict the future, but it will be finished anyway. But now it's a good time to think about the creation of infrastructure to make these basic things that will be also developed more diversified uh, touristical uh, products. And pandemic situation basically just stimulated local tourism development more in positive way, but of course, international tourism suffered uh, quite a lot. And businessmen also, they uh, foresee that this season also must be quite successful financial for different peripheral areas in tourism industries, especially for uh, one day visitors, which is also increasing interest towards awareness to make, make more interest about interest to country and traveling. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'm of good hope that uh, this in insights will have as well, um, will help us in the signing of the new interact program for this area and where the tourist, uh, touristic um, focus can be uh, put in the, um, to the, um, when the tourists can be put as well to the focus because I think this is a good uh, chance for this area because of this peripheric. So, uh, thank you. Drivila, is your question answered? Thank you, yes. And I have here in a chat an interesting question coming from a colleague uh, from Ir Ireland. And uh, his view is that uh, the idea of promoting a Viking trail is a bit challenging given that not everybody really appreciated the contribution of the Vikings to European development and cultural understanding. So of course, from the Western point of view from Ireland, perhaps it's perceived like this. I think in the area where this uh, destination is uh, uh, now in the, in the creation, it's maybe quite different. What do you think about this? I think that Thomas is the right person. Maybe, maybe I will maybe I will answer because I like this question and I think it's a little bit provocative. Of course, everything requires good marketing. In marketing, we we we, we think about so-called interpretation. And of course, this is the this is this is the history. But I rem remember one interesting meeting that we had in Be Belarus. I was invited as an expert by 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 Swedes who wanted to develop tour tourism in, in, in the place in Novopolsk in, in, in Belarus. The, the area was not so well developed, but suddenly Swedish representative said that we have some, something in common. We are like brothers. And they said, what, what is that? And the idea was that we both have Viking heritage. So the Viking heritage was was like 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 the symbol or like 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 the impetus of cooperation of preparing prepare common tourist products and and if you think about Vikings I I have have to say that there is one of the best developed cultural routes in Europe 
uh, I can re recommend the publication called Follow Vikings, and it shows how how this Viking heritage can be converted into very attractive tourist products, into into souvenirs, because it's something secret, something missing. And, and of course, the situation with, with Jotfingas is very, 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 very similar. That, of course, there were misunderstandings, that, that there were wars, but, but as we oh, could... Oh as we could promote uh, uh, Viking heritage in the same way I am I think that that Jotfingan heritage can be promoted because it's some, something very, very very interesting something very secret something something very 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 mystic and it gives uh, uh, people opportunity to go to the historical times to 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 to, to, to think to, to have impressions because there are many 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 events at this moment and that's why I wouldn't worry that some some people uh, see black part of the Viking heritage because I think that domination is this this this, this power and the potential and and that's why. Uh, I, I respect it and I, I like the question, but I, I wouldn't worry about this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have here a rising hand by Natalie. He, she wants to uh, comment and to pose some questions and as an expert in Interreg and cross-border and as well in Lithuanian questions, I'm very happy to, to give you the voice. Natalie, please. Thank you very much, Beata. Thank you. And thank you very, very much to the team uh, for uh, an excellent presentation, intriguing, uh, with intriguing aspects. Um, indeed, I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the few people uh, in the unit who has actually been in that area. And uh, I, I spent a few years of my life in Vilnius and we were, uh, whenever there was a chance, always delighted to uh, drive down uh, south to the to the Polish um, to the Polish border. So um, I'm so so pleased that you have found a an identity um, for the cross border area. I think it's 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 wonderful that you have. Okay, I I, I can take um, Noel's question on the Viking heritage, and I think it's a fair question. But at the same time. Yet think, yeah, will really create some curiosity and, and it is your, it has to be your brand, basically. And I, I was also pleased to see that you, you decided that this is the top brand and that the rest of the common features um, are subsets of that, really, because slow food or, or, or good nature, these are things that, that, that exist in many, many places um, in Europe and in many, many border areas. But the heritage of the Yatvinkas is is specific to to that region. So I think it's really the it has to be the cornerstone on on which um, on which the the future is built. Um, I also wanted to say that uh, I, I think this is an organic process that you have started, and that there will be a lot of developments. And and as Tomas said, this is a long term. Also, Johanna, I think this is a long term process that you have set in motion. Um, and there will be organic developments, there will be uh, difficult moments, bright moments, there will be new partners coming in, there will be partners leaving. This is, this is, this is life. I think it's a uh, it's, it's normal situation. I would, however, really wish that the, the structure that you have proposed is really considered as a temporary <laughs> uh, build that should maybe lead to something a little bit more integrated. Um, I find, well, it, it's my personal uh, uh, reflection really, that the structure is, is a little bit heavy, I thought. Um, and, and also I'm, I'm afraid of having two uh, parallel pillars. If, if nothing is done more jointly, uh, for instance, with an EGTC, I, it was my very first question. EGTC came to my mind immediately, like, like Ricardo. Uh, if you left, if you let two pillars develop uh, uh, side by side, um, a little bit too long, a little bit too much, I think it becomes then difficult to rejoin. So I was, I was, I have doubts about the structure. I would maybe want to know a little bit more about how how you see that in the medium term uh, and the long term. And I would really 
encourage the partners. So it's it's not necessarily for you uh, who have done the study, but the partners who will pick up the study and move it uh, to to consider a a, a real joint cross-border uh, legal structure. Thomas, you said that it was a little bit formal. I don't really agree with that. I think it's a legal structure that allows you to then have access to a number of um, uh, tools uh, or, or, or finances uh, in, in, an, in an easier manner. And you can have you know, the formal structure, the legal structure, but underneath that you can have as many uh, lively <laughs> participatory uh, working groups as you want. But I think the legal structure makes, makes the EGTC very, very interesting also for accessing funding on both sides uh, and EU funding in particular. So that, that was my first point. My second point is, is, is also to Givile and, and to, and to the, um, the cross-border program. Um, on, you, know, you are invited to this, you have been aware of this for a long time, you have been, I think, partly associated to the work. Uh, what, what, is, uh, what is your intention there as, as a program, uh, since you are currently drafting um, the text of your next um, generation of Interreg CBC program there? Uh, how will you incorporate all of this? What, what is your vision on, on that? That was my, my second question. And then my third question was, uh, I haven't heard much quantification. I mean, I haven't m heard much about um, potential revenues from tourism, potential numbers that could be attracted. Uh, have we quantified needs? I know that the needs can be endless, of course, uh, but have we quantified, let's say, needs in the next 10 years and then needs in the next 20 years or or is that going to be also very organic in a way but congratulations and i'm i'm looking forward to uh, my next visit to yatvinga egtc <laughs> if i may uh, i think that i'm the person proper to answer the first question thank you very much for the question yes it's uh, really important uh, how to organize the cooperation, the structure of cooperation uh, between the partners. And I must admit that I also presented the, uh, the underlying conditions that we faced and, and we tried to uh, present and prepare solution that would be best adopted and tailored to the local needs. And we are basing on the ideas also uh, arising from the local needs. And uh, we must remember that this was a bottom-up initiative and we uh, uh, only were like uh, guiding the partners in this uh, area. So these models reflect the needs and the expectations of the partners, let's say. Uh, of course, we also propose the idea of creation of GTC, EGTC and we believe that this is the best and the most appropriate solution, but in a long-term perspective or longer perspective. This is not that we do not think or we just rejected to, to uh, this, this idea. We believe that this is the best solution, but we now have to start or run a cooperation on a more structuralized and organized way. And this is the way that uh, uh, should suit this uh, this needs. Uh, this is suited to the uh, small number of local self-government units cooperating and it engaged as many uh, as it's possible the other stakeholders for the cooperation. So you, you called this structure as a little bit heavy. Possibly you've got such impression looking on the, the model of coordination structure, but we believe and we are, let's say, sure that uh, this model is very soft and this model is uh, very flexible. And um, of course, we've got these two pillars representing Polish and Lithuanian side. That's for now, that's for uh, current situation. And this is something that should lead to rejoining or joining this, uh, this partners. But now uh, there's too many barriers, let's say, to do so at this moment. We believe that this will be possible in five or uh, and in a little bit more years, or maybe in three years, but, but uh, this is not a, uh, this they will depend how the cooperation would uh, be developed. So our task was to run the cooperation on a more structuralized way. And uh, uh, there is a, on the other hand, uh, these two pillars uh, are, uh, um, let's say, um, uh, they represent only two uh, members of the presidium and to, to secretariats. In fact, it's uh, because of the different administrative systems and different legal systems. And uh, in current situation, it should help to cooperate more effectively 
uh, uh, and uh, uh, now, for now, for the current needs, for the current uh, uh, situation, this model should uh, uh, should uh, enable to implement common projects and develop common projects and develop the structure, common structure of tourist information and promotion um, uh, system. So. Uh, Yes, this is a long-term process uh, and the cooperation model that we present you is the first step to organize cooperation in a more structuralized way, but this is just a step towards the future organizational models and, uh, uh, and systems. And we believe that EGTC is a good uh, solution. So, so this is not that we reject this, this idea. Yes, and I would like to add something that I am one of the promoters of EGTCs because <laughs> I have written a book about EGTCs. So, 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 so in my country, uh, I realized that this is a very good uh, idea. And I think that if the stakeholders uh, make a decision and, I, and, and agree, I will be one of the first uh, persons who will support them to create EGTC. Thank you. But it must be the, the initiative of stakeholders, not, not our experts. Thank you. And also I'd like to provide a comment about the uh, quantification of uh, tourist potential, uh, as it was also one of, I think, comment number three. Uh, basically, uh, we uh, also made the research and also we uh, accomplished a lot of detections, also in qualitative aspects and also in quantitative aspects. Uh, there is a lot of uh, also statistical data which is under the permanent uh, monitoring and collection by tourism information centers. And in particular on Lithuanian part, uh, a network of tourism information centers is very well developed and also has a very uh, lengthy tradition. And every year they are making uh, these uh, reports and also providing these uh, data indicators, which are also have public accession. Uh, from Polish part, uh, this system is not uh, in that very intensive uh, development, but uh, concerning about financial uh, indicators and also economic information, the companies, enterprises, they are obliged, obliged according to the law to give financial reports to uh, also taxation office and also to Department of Statistics. And uh, in official sources of statistics in Lithuania, uh, it's possible to find these uh, quantifiables and also these indicators. And thinking about the future, uh, future in future stages development for the future prospects, of course, uh, this first uh, initiative was uh, to make the neighbors closer, and in particular also to support uh, cooperation and also cohesion between neighboring societies on the both sides of the border. Uh, stage number two, uh, looking to the perspective to attract Lithuanians from different regions to pay more interest in visiting this region and also from Polish part. Also, I have some uh, reports, uh, announcements from Poland that also they increasing this awareness in visiting this borderland. And stage number three in the future, that will be also region uh, will be presented on international tourist market will be for many tourists from overseas as a uh, destination. So basically it's a stage-based uh, uh, development. Thank you. Thank you, Jevila. Perhaps you can take the word. Uh, yes, regarding uh, pro program and its uh, activities in, in in this functional area. So first of all, I wanted to say that the beneficiaries like these actors from the region are very active. They already have submitted the project for the current programming period. Um, while when they realized, especially that this cross-border cooperation, the soft activities, they, they are the ones which can be financed from our program. And in the future, in fact, it is the soft activities which can be financed because the program is very small and the infrastructure elements, they will have to search for other financial sources because it's not for the Lithuania Poland program. But uh, the functional areas were being addressed in the needs and potentials for assessment of the future program. And in fact, uh, the functional area, touristic functional area is the only one which has its form and shape and development because other 
potential functional areas are more seen as functional linkages only. So, however, in the future, also mainly soft activities uh, related to the ones which were indicated in the study could be financed by Lithuania Poland program. And uh, the possible activities were taken into account while selecting the priorities and possible activities because this functional area was also addressed in our needs and potentials um, assessment. Nevertheless, it was not final one, but however, we really took this need for these activities into the future program shaping. So. So thank you. Thank you. I hope the questions from Natalie from from Natalie are answered so far. Natalie, do you want to? Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. Um, I hear. <laughs> Uh, I would st still come back. Oh, oh, sorry, just one technical question on on with the structure. Who will, for instance, now own the the brand and and the, and the logo, for instance? Because I guess this is going to be one of the first thing to do is to establish and, as Tomas said, register uh, the identity. Who will do that? This is a very good question. So I would say if we created the EGDC, it would be very simple because it will would be the EGDC, but, but this is so important and I am very, very glad to, to hear that question. The thing is that it is so important at, at this moment. There, there is this new young initiative and it's so important that, that the energy of, of the stakeholders should 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 be used in order to, to create projects uh, visions and at the very very beginning i can un understand that it, it it would be a little bit uh, uh, difficult to um uh, uh, to 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 involve people especially from 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 local governments with uh, limited knowledge with with with, with uh, limited experience it would be difficult to, to, to ask them to create the EGTC. That's why, as Dr. Jakubowski said, it's a perfect so solution, but somehow uh, someone would, would have to help them. And, and the answer is that if we, if we created the EGTC, it would, would be easy, easy. But if we don't, what happens if, uh, now? The thing is that that I would say, compare the, the situation to Euro regions. It's very, very, very simple. Like in Euro regions, the stakeholders uh, nominate uh, one one stakeholder. It, it may be it may be one of the it may be one of the local units who will act on behalf of our stakeholders. So it means that it must be the legal person that will be shown by the stakeholders. That's my answer. If we don't create the EGTC, because only EGTC could, could be the cross-border uh, uh, legal person. So, so if we don't create, we have to nominate one, 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 one territorial unit to be, to, to be the rep representative. This is how I see it. I think this is uh, difficult uh, to, to answer now. And, uh, Better can I and decide, uh, because this is the partner's decision, yes? We designed this, this model of coordination exactly to their needs and exactly to their uh, potential. So they uh, accepted this structure uh, at this moment as, a, as a, uh, interesting uh, for them at this moment. And for sure, they will discuss the, the future activities. And we also included the recommendation that they should focus on such organizational issues uh, after uh, the, the functional area establishment. And for sure, they will discuss these issues uh, soon because they contacted us also to, to uh, give them the logos and uh, other uh, things designed during the project. So for sure, they are thinking about these issues right now. Thank you. As we are uh, coming to the end, but I would invite Jevila to answer as well, uh, or to take position to this question, and then Mr. Jakubowski, and then we will see how to come to the end. Thank you. 
So I wanted to just tell that the current project, which is ongoing, it's uh, uh, about this issue. So this branding issue, uh, the municipalities, which are stakeholders of this functional area, they have some legal agreement. And now they are trying to implement this branding. And I think it's one of the things where they will find the solutions, how they will own it. Currently, they, as far as I can comment, so they, there are legal uh, agreements between all municipalities. So they all signed an agreement that they are doing the region branding together. And this ownership is kind of according to these legal agreements for now. But this branding is still not created yet. They are on on the actions to be to create them in the nearest future. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jakubowski, please. Thank you very much. Responding to these uh, questions of uh, responsibilities, let's say, uh, I would like to uh, underline once again that this model has not been imposed on the partners, but was developed with them. And uh, uh, regarding the crucial issues, uh, uh, as the uh, the personal the responsibility for such legal issues like a brand and so on, uh, we designated in this model two members of the presidium, and they are let's say presidents uh, from both sides, and they are some kind of a leaders of cooperation because any cooperation needs a leader. And in this situation, we've got some leaders from Polish and Lithuanian part, and these leaders were designed or chosen by the partners, uh, uh, of course. Uh, there are some provisions made in our recommendations and it will be also stated in the uh, regulations of the cooperation but uh, we've got such a leader from uh, Lithuanian part and this is the self-government of Las Die, Wojdzie, and from Polish part also uh, we've got some leaders, uh, leader let's say, that would be responsible for undertaking such activities uh, uh, also uh, on behalf of the other partners. So uh, this issue uh, is already, let's say, discussed between the partners. Thank you. So, thank you very much for this answers and for this discussion and for this event and for all the findings. And as I see, we could uh, do something tangible on the border. And I hope that it will be taken forward. It is already partly, as we said, with this ongoing internet project. And uh, I'm here as well, very happy about this, that uh, Interreg is really a lively uh, instrument to help on the borders and there on the border especially as well. And if we uh, succeed in this practical uh, organization of the functional area, touristic functional area, so I would be uh, very proud about uh, everything we've done. Thank you, team. Thank you, Professor Kurowska Pysz. Thank you to your team. And thank you to all participants in be with being with us. The presentations will be provided. Right as well as uh, uh, recording of this uh, event. And uh, in case, of course, as well, the report. And should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me or uh, our team. And we can discuss further about the model if you need to have more information for your borders. Thank you very much to everybody thank you. and have a nice day. Thank you, Beata, thank you. for coordinating all this. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.